yeah, break. It's, it's, it's not on the truth. Yep. It was like, are you kidding me? You are holding holding it down on me. What happened <laughs> when you've done the same thing? Yeah, and it and it's really and I guess kind of leads into what I was gonna actually talk to you um about today. Um, anyways, is you know, once you're delivered, once we're delivered from something, say we deliver from the spirit of abandonment, or you know, um, I, I, I can't think anything else right now, or alcoholism, or whatever. We know we're delivered from those things, but you still have um, temptations with those things, and sometimes it makes you feel like I may not have been delivered, or like if we forgive someone and then it comes back, he's like, "Well, did I really forgive them?" And I find myself having to constantly say, "I forgave them, I forgave them," but I I know that I have, but it, I just want to go into that. Well, let me help you with this. The, the one thing about it now, uh, forgiving someone for what they did to you addresses, addresses you trying to release the bitterness. But the memory and the hurt is still there. Um, we don't, you know, we don't, forgiveness is not about, you know, what, they, what we used to say back in the day, forgive them and forget it. Well, that's a nice term, but it's not reality. And when you forgive a person, you actually are trying to release them by your will. From you getting them back or wanting them injured for what they did to you. You're removing your will out of it. Got that? An act of the will. Now, what you can't remove out of there is the act of the memory. So you still have the memory of what happened to you. The same thing with any, even with any uh, measure of grief, pain, or betrayal, you will still have that memory. Why? Because that's in the corner of mind. I tell people sometimes, and they kind of laugh when I say it, but I don't mean it as a joke. But forgiving people and releasing people and never remembering it again would mean you have some kind of mental block or Alzheimer's. Because you're going to remember and your emotions are going to remember what happened to you. Now, by the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit and the act of your will, you refuse to let that guide your life. Follow me? The Lord, Lord just like this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull something over here. Okay. Versus, versus on forgiving and releasing people. Now, when you look at some of these verses that I'm getting ready to just, and I'm just sharing them uh, separate from online online with you guys. I'm doing it in a separate, because usually I, I, I share them online. But when you begin to look, look at verses dealing with that, verses dealing with forgiveness. And I'm going to quote some of them for you. And what is amazing about this, okay, maybe you want to say forgiving others. Versus with forgiving others. Because God says some, some mighty powerful things in the word of God. He says some strange stuff. But, but it stands to be true. Notice what he says in one scripture. Forgiving one another even as Christ forgave the church. You know, forgiving one another even, even as Christ has forgiven you. That's one of the commandments that God gives us. To forgive those who have wounded us. To have hurt us. Now forgiving them in that manner does not mean that nothing happened. It means that as an act of your will, you're choosing to, uh, to submit to the word of God. In the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew chapter 6, in the Lord's Prayer, it talks about, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, did you check out what that is saying? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Then it goes into forgiving our debts as we forgive others. Jesus even used one a parallel when he was teaching this. He said, with the same measure that you forgive another person, that's the same thing will happen to you. God has tied in together forgiveness. You follow me? Yeah. We're going together. I don't know whether you froze up on my YouTube. That's like how I'm talking like this. We can hear you. We okay. hear you. Okay, excellent. So, when the, and, and, and notice what it says also. It says this. If we forgive not men and women their debts, 
Amen. Neither will ours be forgiven. And the Bible talks about being turned over to the tormentors. Now, what are the tormentors? The tormentors are the emotional warfare and the emotional bondage that comes along with carrying the burden of being bitter and unforgiving. So that's one of the experiences I think that that your family member and yourself goes through and all of us go through. When we ask God to help us to forgive someone and we tell that person that we forgive them. Now, my emotions have not. I actually made my, what we actually do is we make our emotions obey the word. Because my emotions is get you back. My emotion is you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. That's my emotions. But the will of God and the work of the Holy Spirit is, Holy Spirit, help me to release them to you. And let me say something to you. Just by the act of the will and the surrender to the Holy Spirit doing that, you will find out you will have, you, you will care less and less. It'll control you less and less to the point until it will have no control at all. Now, Kiara, does this mean you're going to run out and have a bowl of Cabin Crunch with them? Does this mean you're going to hang out with them? Check that out. What do you think about that? Does it? And we have a like so we have an issue with that with another family member because we have we used to be really close to them, mm -hmm. and um, they basically they did some things to try to split apart our marriage, and so we had to draw really clear boundary lines like hey. We can say hi and bye and, you know, text, but as far as, you know, visiting and things, and we've had a lot of other family members try to make us feel bad, try to guilt us into, well, you know, this, that, and the third, but you don't understand the boundaries that we had to draw and why. Well, there's a grave difference. There's a grave difference in trying to forgive a person and trying to engage someone that would do the same un unforgivable thing. In other words, I can try to follow peace with someone. That does not mean that I would invite them into my life. Do you know you actually can have a person hurt you, do something that's been real twisted, and you can turn around and say, look, I don't want to carry this in my heart. So I ask, I ask you to forgive me for whatever I've done. And that person might say, well, yeah, well, I, I want you to forgive me too. But because their character may have not changed, that don't mean you give them opportunity to operate again. I'll name something twisted that, that you can't play with. Let's say Evelyn has a real good friend of hers. They've been friends for years, but the same friend always makes passes after anybody Evelyn dates. So throughout high school and now even in marriage, this person has the same way. Mixed passes. Now, do you believe that Evelyn should say, well, I forgive her everything she's done, then have her, have, have me driving her around early in the morning to give her a, a ride to work alone? Really? Not. Oh, no. Let me hear you, <laughs> sis. Let me hear you work this one out. Hey, no way. <laughs> no way possible. You're not that generous? Oh, come on. You're not that forgiving? <laughs> We don't love each other that much, Apostle. We listen. Well, I'm driving myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, here goes the thing. When you got situations in your life like that, wherein the person has crossed the line and you are trying not to operate in bitterness, you're trying not to operate in unforgiveness, you may very well have to extend forgiveness for what they've done to you in that particular situation but not put yourself in an environment with them because they're not safe. Want me to give you something in the Bible that was like that? Go ahead. Check this out. King David never attacked King Saul at all. Never did. King Saul was envious and jealous of David. What he did was when David... Uh, when the church, when the daughters of Zion sang a song of praise after David had took and put his life on the line and fought Goliath and won, the daughters of Zion sang a song. Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. 
King Saul had a problem with security. He was very insecure. Let me tell you this, Kiara Allen. King Saul was so insecure that when he was sought for to be king, he hid himself among the stuff. When Samuel went to go get him, to bring him king after he was elected, he was so insecure and dealt with so much intimidation, so much rejection, insecurity in his own mind, he was hiding among the stuff to keep from being king. So now when David turns around and kills Goliath, here is a man that is a king. Check this out. Here is a king afraid of a kid. Isn't that amazing? A king that is afraid of a kid. And David turns around and, and listen, I'll tell you another thing about insecure people. They will try to put their arm, their stuff on you. Wow. And Saul true. tried to put, he, he tried to put his armor on David. My thought right straight would be this. King Saul, if that armor ain't helping you to whoop that giant, why are you putting it on me to weight me down? You better come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what was happening in this situation so what, what it goes on when those women sang that song the bible said king Saul eyed david from that day forward so he had, he was envious and jealous of him therefore he even offered david one of his daughters that he knew was a headache he said look i'm gonna give him micah so she will be a, a, a thorn to him also, she can be in his house. So the king gave away his daughter to David, not as a prize, but as something that would be a hassle. And she was. She was a hassle. But he did it because he was envious of David. He did it because he did not think well of David. Later on, he started hunting David down. And there was one place in there. And I'm, I'm going to talk to my computer again. I have played the fool, King Saul. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hold on one second. Uh, You're good. Let's say you, oh, there we go. Now, here, here it is. In, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 21, then Saul said, I have sinned. Come back, David, my son. Because you consider my life previous day, previously today, I will not try to harm you. Harm you. Surely I have acted like a fool and have been terribly wrong to you. Did you get that? He said, I don't act like a fool. I've been terribly wrong to you. And y'all remember the story, don't you? He went back in the and he kept right on. He went right after David Steele. Yeah, he said how he had played a fool and then he went after him. In other words, he was like that person. I usually use this when I'm talking about domestic violence. It's like that man that that beats your butt, whoops your hide, and go, oh, Sakara, I'm so sorry. I, 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 I'm not that. That's not who I am. And then turns around and says, come on back home. You come out, and then he tear your head up again. And what he, do, what he was doing was he was saying, I'm sorry, while he was still attacking. So guess what David had to do? David had to stay away from him. There are some people that you can forgive what they did, but because their actions are devious, because their actions are not changing, you have to get away from them. So no, forgiveness is not always joining back with everybody. It's not. Come on. This so. is revelation. This is life changing. I, oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to teach you how to be mean to somebody. I'm just trying to teach you that right in the Bible, glory be to God, there are situations. See, I don't, American Christianity, and I'll put it like this, because we have a way of interpreting things that is not, not as wise as the Middle East from which these verses came from. Yeah. The, uh, the American interpretation of forgiveness is, I forgive you. Therefore, I can bring you right back in. You, you, you have full blast, full open charge to do the same thing you did to me again. And that's not exactly how it works. If there, there are some people, listen to me real well. 
to Kara. There is one class of people that you have a conflict with. You ask you you ask them for forgiveness. They ask you for forgiveness, and they own their part, and you own your part. That type of person you can deal with, and you may be able to still fellowship and be friends. Got that? Yeah. yeah. Then there's the next category of person. Boy, I'm gonna put that. You don't mind me putting this up, do you? The, the next category of person is this kind. They will do stuff to you and only repent if you catch them. Mm. They, oh, will, right. they will only say they're sorry because they're caught. That type of person, you can't trust them. Mm -hmm. Now, and you don't completely erase them totally out of your life, but you know what you're dealing with so therefore, on certain things, you make them no part of. Got that? Then there's this third level of person that they do their mess, say they're sorry, and keep right on attacking you. They do their mess. You say, well, I'm going to quit talking about you. I know it hurts you. And keep right on stirring up stuff. That type of person, you don't even have a bowl of Captain Crunch with. You let them go. You don't hang with them no more. Do you follow me? Yes, following. We need to learn how to engage certain kinds of people. Even in my life, there are people in my life that I have forgiven. I even love them still. But I don't trust them. I'm not going to be hanging out with them. And I'm not bringing them over to my house. I'm just ending the conflict. They're going their way. I'm going my place. Got anything to say? That's good. That's good. There's, there's really a lot of revelation I'm dealing with people because, oh, like what you're saying, like we, we, the, it's only one particular person, but we did it just because we need to protect our family, protect the peace in our home, and, you know, different people, you know, we, we can say, you know, we forgive you, then, you know, we don't know what you're praying, we don't know what you're saying, you know, or plotting on us, so what you're saying is absolutely right, and it's good, and it brings so much, um, not that we didn't, we, we have freedom in the decision, but it brings so much clarity and back into the decision that we made. Well, there are, there are, there are clearly lines that can be crossed. There are lines that can be crossed where things will never be the same. It's just the way it is in life. There are lines that can be crossed where and you can't uh, engage the same way. This is why people need to be careful what we do to each other. Think of this verse in the book of Proverbs. It says, a brother that is offended is harder to be won than a strong city. There is an offense that can happen that makes it hard for you to get back together. Didn't And guess what? And you always say, well, you don't forgive them? No, they hurt the relationship. They hurt the relationship, sis. And when the relationship is wounded and hurt, it can come to a place where you're not the same, depending on the treachery. Do you really think, I'm uh, just being fictitious, just giving you something way stupid. Do you really think that if I made a pass at one of Evelyn's sisters, that everything going to be cool from there? Really? You don't think that's going to have an effect? I might say, well, Ev, uh, I just had a bad moment and the demons was using me. Yeah, big deal. Now, now, do you don't really think that's not going to have an effect with my brother-in-law? Do you think he going to want me to come over with them and have turkey dinner? Really? You don't think that certain things that are done, here goes another one. Are y'all with me, soldiers? Oh, yeah, we here, miss. The boss lady would not be having this. <laughs> <laughs> Reason why I pause like this, I know there's a delay in our taping, but I just wanted folks to know that I'm not just here by myself. But listen, I mean, I'm just giving some, you open the door, uh, sis, for me to answer a lot of wisdom questions here. Here goes another one. If, if someone in the family molests or tries to molest your daughter, if you don't outright learn, they'll kill them, all right? <laughs> if someone does something that twists it, and even if, you have, were able to stop it, deal with it, and forbid them to come to your house anymore. 
you don't think that's going to have some serious ramification on whether that person can come at your house anymore? Absolutely. Do, 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 and families are dealing with stuff like this here. Now, sis, Alan, families are dealing with stuff like this. No. And they're trying to navigate. Now, me being saved, should I ever talk to them again? Me being saved, can they still come by? Let me tell you something. Uh, I know I'm dealing with a legal situation. But most of the time, if it ever goes to the law, that person would be banned away from being around any child anyway. But but what I will say to you is this. There are Christians that I know sitting right here today. Guess what, sis? There are Christians that I know from counseling that the person who went after their child, that person is somebody in the family that others expect them to be cool with them. And it's not going to happen. They expect that person to now trust that person. Well, you know, you know the devil was using them. You can say the devil was using them all you want to, but you don't put your children in the in the in the path or in the potential of some type of pedophile. Yeah. But you're supposed to be saved, Carol. Alan, y'all supposed to be saved people. You're supposed to yeah. give people a chance when they repent. That person can repent, but because of their actions, their actions have cost them a freedom and a liberty in your environment. Come on. Yay. Yay. No, but, but you see, they don't talk about this, do they? You hear very no. few people talking about this kind of stuff. And there are families that are going through this. Now, do you say, well, Brother Hopkins, shouldn't I hate them? Shouldn't I hold unforgiveness toward them all their life? If you want to be bound up, yeah. Hmm. Well, what, well what, what, what can I do? Well, here goes what you can do. You can acknowledge that they have violated the, the a high rule of, uh, of, of intermingling. You can acknowledge that you're not going to put your child at risk and have them around. You can acknowledge that I pray that God delivers them and sets them free. But as for being in my environment where they can repeat that act, I can't take the risk, nor would I risk my child. Now, that's what you can do. But ain't that unforgiveness? No, it's called wise. Hey, yes, yes, yes. Y'all's camera uh, unfroze. It was full for a long time. I'm glad oh. you ended that up. That's why I was talking like I was, because y'all were froze for a long time. But in our conversation here, Dealing with subjects like this in the realm of forgiveness, in the realm of releasing people for things that they've done to you, there are rules of engagement. God did not say that forgiveness is non-remembering of what happened to you. He did not say that there wouldn't be boundaries that some acts will cause because it's wisdom. And there are boundaries. Let me hit you with another one. See, we're starting trouble today. <laughs> if, if I ran out on Evelyn, I'll give a fictitious name with, 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 with Sheila, fictitious. If I ran out with Evelyn with Sheila and, and Sheila was a member of our church, guess what? I won't be telling Evelyn, well, uh, 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 you know, in other words, Evelyn, I repented to Evelyn. Sheila even says, I'm sorry. We both say we sorry. And Evelyn goes through the pain. Evelyn goes through the disrespect. Evelyn goes through the deep hurt. Evelyn goes through the betrayal. Guess what I owe Evelyn? I owe her giving her time to heal. I owe her, are you hearing me if I care anything about her? I yeah. owe her the understanding that it's going to take her a while to adjust, even if we don't separate or divorce. It's going to take her a while to adjust having me crawl on some other woman. Sheila and I both owe Evelyn not to do nothing dumb to disrespect her now. We already disrespected her enough. So wow. therefore, no, I'm not counseling with Sheila anymore. No, me and Sheila ain't meeting at Walmart or something and I have a discussion with her. Because of my actions, and by the way, on the tape, this is not what happened. This is an example. Yeah, I, I gotta do this because you just don't know. Yeah, yeah. If I had an affair with with Sheila, guess what? I owe it to Evelyn, and Evelyn says, "Well, I'm trying to forgive y'all for what you did." Well, guess what? I can't holler. Well, Sheila's my friend. 
I don't sleep with my friends. I got plenty of friends. I don't sleep with them. You get my point? So therefore, what me and Sheila call friends, and I even had this one. Some folk, I've had folks tell me, well, I slept with my spiritual father. And what do you think I should do? Well, I maintain to tell you, he wasn't your spiritual father when he was sleeping with you. He was just a man. So therefore, he crossed that line and you crossed that line. I hold him more accountable because he's supposed to be the leader. But I hold you both accountable because you wasn't no puppet. But at the end of the day, y'all hear me? I would not be able to have the same relationship with Sheila ever again because we crossed the line. But Evelyn says she forgave us. She might forgive us, but our communication and our relationship now has switched positions because of the act that we did. Are you hearing me? Now, I, and, and guess what? I've even met people that the person that messed up with the other person's mate, they repented even to the wife, even to the husband. And they do, they have decided after healing that they still have interaction with that person. But that interaction still has that rule of engagement that y'all ain't gonna be, listen, you don't be disappearing nowhere with Sheila. She don't be calling you no time of night about nothing. And you ain't gonna be on the phone having her call you then hiding the bathroom with your cell phone. Yeah. I'm talking about all the dumb stuff people do and then wonder what, what? What are you talking about what, what? <laughs> you tripping the stuff you're doing, please. You know what I you know what I believe, Alan and Tahira? I believe don't act like don't gas like me and act like I'm supposed to be crazy when I when I'm asking you the ordinary normal thing. If you've been messing with her, then you shouldn't be on the phone with her if you want to stay with me. You shouldn't have nothing to call about. You shouldn't have text messages. Y'all should be exchanging stuff on Facebook because you crossed the line. You lost the privilege. Now, I know I'm going to make some folk mad because you're trifling. You want to do what you're doing. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you. You want to do what you're doing. Then, we, then some of us men, Alan, get, get real ignorant. I'm a, I'm a man. I, I, I ain't going to have no woman telling me nothing, evidently. We, we know that. And you're now, you're now, now what would it look like? Let, can we talk to, sis, can we talk? Yeah, we can what talk. would it look like? Me arguing with Evelyn over someone that I had an affair with, that she has trying to forgive us, trying to save our marriage. And I'm arguing with Evelyn Holland. You can tell me what to do. I'll talk to whoever I want. You selfish, narcissistic. You, you selfish. You just selfish. Here you are. You done betrayed the woman. You done broke her heart. She done had to deal with the fact that it happened. Everybody else know it did. And now you're so selfish that you can't see nothing wrong. Were you still fooling with her? Selfish. How many understand what I'm saying? It's true. I understand. It's true. Because the relationship change when lines are crossed. Amen. Now that's dealing with forgiveness of betrayal in relationship. And do you know that same thing can be true with betrayal in family? If 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 you had a sister, just fictitious sis, that kept attacking you and Alan's marriage, every time she comes, she'd even lie on him. Now this is fictitious. I know him. Uh, that, 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 don't even don't even have me go for I'm being I'm being nice. But if she kept attacking Alan, even though the man might say, well, Alan, you need to forgive her. And he's like, every time you get with her, you come back, your head's all toe up, sis. Honey, every time you get with them, you come back all jacked up. Now, you really expect him to tolerate that. And and, and then that's what, well, well, she says she's sorry. She says she's sorry and still doing it. Yeah. So guess what happened? And now I asked him, Alan, you're going to have to forgive her, but you're going to also have to harness her. You can forgive her, but make a perimeter of how far you're going to trust her. I can forgive you, not trust you. Let me have, I can forgive you and not trust you because you earned it. I, I'm like there were a lot of people right now. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, 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 well. It, it, it is life. What did yeah. I tell y'all about, about Jesus and John too? 
He went, and he needed not the man should testify of it because he knew what was in him. Sometimes you know what's in people. And in life, in life, this is another one nobody wants to admit. Nobody wants to admit this. Not many people. In life, you have to deal with some people according to who you're dealing with. Sure do. Wow, that's so true. Sure do. And that ain't and that ain't got nothing to do with hating. That ain't got nothing to do with wishing people ill will and cursing people. Stop being silly. But there are some folk. Oh, look, I had an individual not too long ago that the only way they wanted to deal with us if they could hustle us. So when they come up, what am I expecting? Yeah. I hustle. Yeah. And I shut that thing down. Nothing else, not another thing. Because I know now, you say, well, you need to show them some love. I'm showing them love, but mm -hmm. I'm even showing myself some. Yeah. I love right. myself yeah. enough not to allow the enemy to use my kindness as a as a stepping board for him to do stuff that he wants to do to me. Is anybody, see, are you seeing anything in what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right there. Now, all of these, and, and how, and Kiara, how we trip them to, are these are touching all these areas of how to forgive, should I forgive, how to deal? Because it's not a matter of whether you should forgive. The answer is yes, you should forgive people. Now, and the other part is how do you engage? And you engage with the forgiveness and the response afterward according to what you're dealing with in the situation. Plain and simple. Thank you. Hey. Plain and simple. Huh. I bet you this. I, I guarantee you this. When Jesus, when they were trying to hurt Jesus and he slid through the crowd and hid, you know why he did that, didn't he? Because he knew what he was dealing with. David no longer would meet with Saul. And at the end, the last time Saul met David, he said, come on back home with me, man. Come on back, David. You've been fairer than I am. Come on back, David. I played the fool. I've done you wrong. The Bible said, Saul went his way, and David went to his place. David went his way, and Saul went to his place. Saul's place was the battlefield where he died. David's way was the way of a king. And sometimes in life, you have to forgive people and go your way. Sometimes things will never be the same. I will never forget this as long as I live. My my one of my best friends is one of one of my chief son. My chief son is my best friend in the world. He is my best friend. There a situation that he's been with. This man has served me in the ministry for close to 40 years. You hear me? He's been with me and Evelyn almost as long as me and Evelyn been married. He knows my strength, my weaknesses. Matter of fact, if when they come to counseling and marriage, that man is the one who counsels me and Evelyn. If he sees something, he can step up on me and say, Apostle, I've noticed this about such and such, the way you're treating Sister Evelyn. That man has that kind of power in my life. Do you follow me? Yeah. No. Years ago, years ago, him and I came in a disagreement, and it got hot. It got heated. You hear me? And it got so heated that we were starting to say things to each other, and he stopped with tears in his eyes, and he said, Apostle, Let's stop before we say something and can't get back. He wanted to preserve our relationship and our friendship. Tiara, I, Tiara, I, Tiara, I, I thought about that so many times. I thought about that day, Alan, how he stopped me from talking, how we stopped from arguing. It was both of us now, not just one. And, he's, and he said, let's stop before we say something and can't get ourselves back again. I believe right then and there was how he how he saved our relationship to be yeah. as strong as it is today. Because wow. my best friend, the man that is my best friend, that man could ask me for anything but Evelyn. We could probably get it. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> that, that is not that is not many people in the planet that I'll ever say that about. That man could ask me for anything in this world but Evelyn and probably would get it from me. But that day, years ago, we were young in the ministry and some things had come up and we got heated in an argument. And he said, Pastor, let's stop. Tears in his eyes. Let's stop before we say something to each other and can't get back. 
and this humility was so powerful. Oh, huh? this humility was so powerful. Yeah, he's an humble man. He's a good man. He he is a good man, and I'm gonna tell you this right now, sis. I would have never. I, now I know. Come on, religious folk. I know I'm where I am because of Jesus and dear Nancy. <laughs> I would have not been where I am with the help that God gave me, that God gave me, that God gave me if it wasn't for him. I'm known worldwide, and he served me greater than the world so wide. That man. So sometimes you have to be careful of saying things and doing things that could cause a wound and a hurt that becomes unforgivable. Where you damage what you had because you couldn't shut up and let something go. There is a time and a season where you speak your peace and you go off and you let folks have it. And then there's a time when you know it's better to hold your peace and let God help work it out. You say something and burn a bridge. You'll never be able to cross again. Wow. Do you hear me? Yes, See, all of this, all of this is a part of relationship, is a part of forgiving, is a part of, of stuff. This is stuff that hardly talked about. I'm talking about the real, real. I don't care how anointed you are. You're going to face this. I don't care how many gifts and books you write. You're going to face this in life. You're going to face areas that are hard to forgive. You're going to face people doing stuff to you that. You, you don't know whether you're you're holding unforgiveness or hate them or whether it just hurts to know they've done you that way. You're going to face that. It gets confusing. And then you're going to face situations where they do something so twisted that you can't have nothing to do with it and everybody else be praising them and you be going like, y'all y'all can go ahead. I'm good. You face that in this world. You know what, y'all? I'm not mad because everybody doesn't get along with everybody I do. You know why some people can't get along with someone that you can? Because they didn't have the experience with them that you did. Yep. Got that? Yep. I say this, and I'm, I'm going to use this example, very clear example. I know of men who were lousy fathers when their children were small, but they became older men and changed. But the man their child remembers is the one who wasn't there. And someone else will say, how could you look at this brother like this? That's a good guy. And the other person go, I resent him. They ain't never been there. They're deadbeat. But you got to understand, that person's wound and pain sees that person that's your friend now from the light of what they knew about them then. They don't see no change because they're in pain. They can't forgive them because they're in pain. And God help them if they have another child and learns from the mistakes that they had with that child and treats the next child differently. That happens every day. Yep. Do you hear me? Someone, mm -hmm. some father, some mother that wasn't there and then years later, ended up changing and the ones who had them during the time when they were just twisted bound up selfish addicted whatever the reason was that child is getting healed from the bitterness of being that per child's parent that parent's child while the other children they have going like daddy ain't never was like that daddy was good you follow me what i'm saying to you yep and what doubles that wound, Tara, is, is that that first set of children are hurting because they're wondering, why couldn't you treat us that way? And it's because that father was bound. Now, when you talk about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, then make that thing work for all occasions, not just for the one you accept. This also is an area when it comes to forgiveness and unforgiveness. Now, if I would ask that first group of children, forgive that man. He's changed. It would take the grace of God to bring him to that place of releasing him. It would take the grace of God because they're bitter and they're hurt and they're watching him live a total different way with the children he got now that he did when he was with them. 
or not with them. They don't talk about that too much, do they? Ooh, this is strong, Apostle. This so, is strong. Those are so, the same feelings that I had. But check this out. If the others that are listening at us, whoever's listening at this on YouTube or whatever vehicle we're using, let me share something with you. This may be your situation. Ask God for the strength to release your father or release your mother to God. Because if you walk in that bitter, ain't no need to resent those the next children. They didn't do nothing. The reason why they didn't experience, experience the same thing you did, it could be a number of reasons. But I, but I have actually, woman of God, Alan, you guys, I have actually talked to people, men, and, and, and even women who acknowledge they failed their first children, acknowledge that they, they, that, that they can understand the bitterness of their son or daughter and the way they resent them, although the new children that came years later never experienced what they did. It was because at the time, of your birth, there were circumstances. There were perfect storms of rejection, perfect storms of abandonment. Wrong, wrong is two left shoes. Straight on dead wrong for what happened to you. But God still saved you. But God still protected you. But God still brought you to the place where you have uh, been saved by the gospel, kept by the power of God, and even made it through life. And now, now you got the big challenge. Are you going to remain bound by the past from a daddy that you can never get back anything? Or are you going to push forward to your future? And either or, let him go because of where he was not. Or move on with your life and leave it alone. But I'm going to tell you something right now. No one often gets any freedom going back to the past to get it. It's uh, you, we get free forward, not backwards. Wow, I know how to mess somebody up. We Ooh, get we get free forward and not backwards. And I'm gonna hey. tell you something. I will share this one time, woman of God. A young lady called me up. She said, "Apostle, I want to." And I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna have to get ready to go. Okay, soldiers. Because right. I, I got an appointment. Like I said, you know we, you know we like to talk like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A young lady, and I got to put this on there before I go. You're going to love this, Aaron. A young lady calls me. She said, Apostle, I'm going to run something by you. I said, okay, let me hear what you got. My father was never there for me. I said, okay. I even had to find him myself. I said, okay. She said, I am going to see him. I called, and he said I could come. And I said to her, baby girl, and that's my affectionate words. I only say because I'm an old dude. Yeah. I said, I said, baby girl, what is your expectation when you get there? I said, you want me to help you navigate this. What are you expecting from him when you get there? She said, well, well, brother Ivory, he knows what I expect. Number one, uh, if he receives me as his daughter and is interested in getting to know me better, I am willing to let him get to know the woman who I am now. Not the child that he left, because that girl is done, and she he can't be ever be daddy of the ones of, of, of day. he can't father me the way he should have when he missed that plane that that ship sailed. But she said, now if he actually is still rejecting me, I will say, well, at least I reached out to him. That way, when he dies, I don't have no regrets on me whatsoever. I tried. And she said, now, what do you think of what I'm telling you? I said, I think you have processed this well. A, you went in and gave him an opportunity because of the opportunity you wanted to get a chance to meet you or not. B, you were well ready to understand. He'd been rejecting you anyway. So this would just be closure for you to stop even thinking of pursuing him. Three. If he accepts you, then he, you, you are even saying the man cannot try to be, make you the little girl, his little girl that he missed when he wasn't there when you were. If he's willing to meet the adult woman, then you can learn how the both of you have a relationship because being biological daddy doesn't create a relationship. Being there does. Boom, I'm going to say it one more time. 
being a biological father doesn't create a relation doesn't create create a relationship being there does now folks on that being said i've got to get ready to get out of here and what have you i will get the clip to you woman of god and i may cut uh the beginning of it because of some of the stuff you said in the beginning was very personal woman of god i will give you the, the cut before i put it up okay that's fine all right god bless you talk to you later bye bye yeah, all right bye. Bye -bye. all right and remember folks god he is he's watching bye bye